This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. What's going on, freaks? Hey, look at there's Blue and Chloe there. And went and had my uh, physical today. Physicals aren't the way they used to be, I don't think. <laughs> they used to be a little different back in the day, I think. I did get um, two vaccines. I uh, got the flu shot and the tetanus shot. You know what's amazing, everybody, is how, uh, if, like, I wish there was these people that give shots and you can pay them to a specific person to give shots. Because remember how, like, the, the tetanus shot hurts a lot, you know? Like, usually when you get the shot itself. But this lady that did mine, I didn't feel either the flu shot or the tetanus shot one after another. I didn't even have a clue that I had gotten a shot. It was like, what? She did them so fast and bing, 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 bing. She goes, yeah, it's the people who put it in there and kind of grind around with the needle. You know, those are the ones that, uh, where they hurt. So my shoulder's a little bit sore, so I guess that's the part that uh, is a little bit sore. I've never, I haven't had a tetanus shot in like 30 years. Yeah, I mean, I don't even remember the last time I just avoid, 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 avoid. And she goes, I said, well, I'll get a flu shot today. And she goes, come on, get the tetanus shot. Come on. And I said, okay, all right, throw it in there. <laughs> I didn't really want to. And I was just bearing down for something really bad. And it wasn't at all. She said, she just goes straight in and out, bam, really fast kind of pulls the skin up and then like, like squeezes it open, uh, out a little bit and then goes ding ding out and then it was literally this fast went like this flu shot okay hold on a second all right and oh, we're all done <laughs> I went what the hell man I couldn't believe it could not believe it and it didn't hurt Yeah, I talked to uh, Dan Carr today. Uh, he's he's been dealing with some really crazy stuff himself. So he's still out there, you guys. He just hasn't been able to get come back on here. But maybe one of these days he'll pop in. You never know, you know. Kind of miss Dan Carr. <laughs> he was always so funny. I don't know, you know, what RSV is. I've got the um, Shingles series, and I'll probably get the new variant update of COVID once, uh, you know, in like a couple, like a three weeks or so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll probably be back around one of these days. So how are you guys doing? Waiting for your surgery, yeah. My 24-year-old had a shingles. The doc said it's a side effect of COVID. Eh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Let's see. Actually, I think I heard somebody else say something like that.
Uh, the initial Pfizer vaccine application mentioned no reported adverse facial filler reactions with the vaccination. Uh, let's see. Uh, the first case of post-COVID-19 vaccine-related varicella zoster virus, a.k.a. shingles, erupted was seen in Las Vegas Dermatology Clinic and posted on our social media. But how do you know that that's what that, you know, how that, where that came from? I mean, they have like, there's like 20 cases in here. I wonder why, why that would do that. You know, maybe it lowers your, I don't know, doesn't make any sense to me. Are you gonna get a brain transplant? Wow. That might hurt. I gotta be honest with you. Hmm. Well, that'd be interesting if it sounds like it can be a side effect. Mm -hmm. Vaccine application mentioned no reported. Okay, yeah. Published. Trusted sources report show that people can develop shingles days or weeks after receiving a COVID-19. Wow, that's crazy. Well, maybe if you have the vaccine, it makes it less likely in that event, I guess. So you're right. There you go. Hey, thanks, Annabelle, still. Yep. Let's see. Yeah, you should probably get the vaccine there, Sandy. It uh, actually isn't too bad. I mean, makes you feel a little, the second one makes you a little, feel a little strange. You know, like you don't feel well. Yeah, yeah that one probably hurts. There's 15. Right? All right. Well, anyways, there's been some... Uh, not expecting a ton of people watching today. But if you guys like to help support the Great Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, that'd be great. Uh, you guys know the the drill, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but I appreciate it. The, uh, you know, I, I'm not live on the scene. I mean, it's amazing how many subscribers, people who are like live on this you know either streaming somebody else's live stream or live at the scene in the manhunt it's like they're just these heroes for everybody it's amazing i mean we're talking like uh one person got like forty thousand subscribers really man it's amazing i wish uh i wish just the regular ho-hum true crime had the same effect every once in a while. It doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. When shingles hits the in the face, it's agonizing. Yeah. All right. Well, I wasn't pr planning on making this a you know full-on shingles uh, conversation. I do feel like a little, I don't know, sort of like, like you feel right before you get the flu. I mean, I got the shot like four hours ago and I'm sort of feeling a little weird. The uh, tetanus one, I never get, uh, the flu shot never makes me feel like anything. Hey, Tracy, what's going on? Long time no see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not unhealthy. You know, just probably could lose a uh, I don't know, fifteen pounds or so. You know, feel like lately I've been eating a bunch of garbage. You know, just it was after I got COVID. You know, it's a uh, it was so great to be able to eat something again <laughs> that had flavor, but plus my lungs weren't working very well. But lately, last few weeks, it's been, my lungs have worked better. 
uh, yeah, for a while there, it's just short of breath, you know, it's hard to, I mean, I can do my, my, uh, treadmill though, uh, three, three or four miles on there, so that's good. Yeah, it's at this point, it's almost a miracle to have not caught COVID. <laughs> yeah, well, I asked about that, like, do you put them, uh, I, thanks, Cali Gal 3. I asked about that. I go, do you like mix them together or like, how does that work? She goes, no, I just do the other one about an inch below the other one. I was like, man, are you going to make like a, why don't you just make one shot with it all in there and just. But she was so amazing at the shots. Thank you, Cali Gal 3. And you have not had COVID either, yeah. I guess, I mean, if you don't, if you stay away from large crowds of people and wash your hands and, you know, and wash your hands regularly and stuff like that, you, you can avoid it. Uh, when my wife got it, it wasn't like I could avoid it, right? I mean, we're just right there. I'm not going to go. I just figured, ah, oh, shit, I'll get it. Uh, but what I would say is, uh, like I was saying before, if you're going to use that Pax, Pax, Pax Lovid, which actually stops the replication of the virus, I wouldn't take it like the second you catch COVID. Like, like if you're sitting there, oh, like let's say your spouse has it, so you're assuming you're going to get it, so you're testing regularly, and the minute you test positive, oh, then you just start jamming down Paxlovid. I mean, I, I did it so fast that I actually used one of her doses, and then when I got my dose, I gave back her dose because it takes like five days or something. And so what happened, uh, I, I've said this before, I believe, this is my opinion, that my, I didn't get enough viral load to develop a strong immune reaction before taking Paxlovid. So it was like when I took it so fast that it stopped the replication, but uh, my body, once the, uh, during the time that the replication stopped didn't have enough antibodies to wipe it out yet and so i think that's uh, where the problem is right there and uh i think it's a legitimate theory even um well hell my dad was like yeah that sounds pretty reasonable <laughs> and he's a high-end uh, doctor there yeah so you kind of almost want to wait like two days in when you catch it and then sort of not feel good at all, then take it. Then it, it kicks in and fights it. That's great glass house. I don't know what that means. No idea. Um, what? Who are you talking about? <laughs> What's a glass house story? What's going on? How you do? Hmm. Hey, thanks, Kami. Yeah, you know, this could turn into a longer show, but what there? What I'm going to go over first are two DNA cases recently that are one of them's pretty freaky. Uh, Ada sent me one of them. What's the part about Glass House? I, I guess I missed it. Oh, there's a person with the name. I worked in a pharmacy at the height of COVID. Only one of my coworkers got it. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> well, you guys had to wear masks, right? And sometimes you're behind the barrier. But. And, by the, and also when you had... Usually when the height of COVID, you weren't buying stuff at the pharmacy. You weren't going to the pharmacy if you had COVID. You'd be going to some clinic and sitting outside and they bring you something. And there was no treatment or anything back then, really. I mean, they had the IVs that you could take. I, I thought they were referring to like glass houses. I didn't realize there was somebody in there with the name. <laughs> Yeah, so now it makes sense. No, I don't have it again. I just got um, the flu and tetanus vac 
vaccinations today at the same moment like within one second of each other same arm but one like a little lower my arm doesn't feel too bad now it's not the sore as I was thinking but maybe that comes in later we'll see okay anyways let me get let's go get to the uh the actual true crime stories you know the one the other things that exist in the world oh i guess there's chloe right there Right there. And then... I think the one, the Delta, the Delta version of the coronavirus is the one that I, I didn't want to ever get. That one sounded like that was a nightmare. At the time, it, it was just devastating every, everybody. I never get anything on the on the flu shot. Okay, there we go. So this one, we'll just go back in time like we always do to get a you get a better, different feel for it. Uh oh, there goes Chloe. <laughs> She's okay. Look at that scary clown. Yeah, I've done it multiple times. My arm. Okay, it says police search today for what police called a real psycho in connection with the sex slaying of a woman with a red rose tattoo above her left breast. This is one of the most vicious killings I've ever seen, said Detective Lieutenant Arthur Kelly, head of the homicide squad. We have a real psycho. However, police said they had no firm leads to the killer's identity. The police identified victim as Susan M. Rose, a 24-year-old unemployed secretary who moved to Boston three years ago from Jamestown, Pennsylvania. They said she was last seen alive when she visited the apartment of a male friend at 4.15 a.m. Tuesday to get a cape for a Dracula, um, for a Dracula's helper costume she planned to wear at a Halloween party. Uh, workmen following a trail of blood discovered her battered body Tuesday on the second floor of a gutted apartment building in the city's uh, back bay section. The cape and her clothing were strewn nearby. The killing was the city's 73rd murder this year, one more than was committed in all of 1978. Police spokesman James Walsh said the woman was pronounced dead at the scene. She had been sexually assaulted and death was apparently caused by multiple blows to the head. Her body, clad only in a lavender sweater, was discovered by a workman converting the building into condominium apartments. Police said her body was found on its back in front uh, in a front room at the end of a trail of still damp blood. Police theorized the body was dragged to the second floor apartment. Workmen told police that the four-story building was locked when they arrived to work at 7 a.m. I mean, that sounds just hideous. Let's see. Like, I think this might be the, let's see, 10, 17. Okay. It says, Back Bay woman slain, no suspects, police say. 
a 24 year old back bay uh, and by the way I've got the apartment buildings right here in Boston right there I guess it was being renovated at the time a 24 year old back bay woman was beaten to death early yesterday morning and left in a pool of her own blood police said in a building at 285 Beacon Street back bay a few hundred yards from her own apartment the woman was identified as Susan M Rose of Dartmouth Street both reportedly was uh, Rose was a port reportedly was employed as part-time secretary her partially clad body was discovered shortly before 7 a.m. by a worker employed by a firm that is um, renovating the four-story red brick building police said the woman had also been sexually assaulted Rose described as 5'5 five five and 130 pounds was last seen by her boyfriend in a bar near Charles Circle about 1 a.m. according to Lieutenant Arthur Kelly of the Boston Police Homicide Unit Rose remained at the bar until it closed at 2 a.m. yesterday on Dartmouth Street a woman who lived in the same building with Rose said she knew her but not very well I really don't know anything about her she lived with her uh, she lived here since June or July I saw her last night the woman said in a quiet voice she came in at about seven o'clock and was carrying let's see uh, carrying something <laughs> I don't know what that said let me go back and she was carrying oh yeah groceries I missed that last part there so she was carrying groceries and we exchanged pleasantries I heard they didn't find her handbag and I'm a little nervous that there's a murderer running around with keys to the apartment downstairs the building where Rose was found as being converted to condominiums. Residents of the area said vagrants have been sleeping at night in the building, which had no windows in the rear faces and alley. At the end of the alley is the apartment where Rose lived, according to police. Oh, really? How does that work? So it must be behind it, right? On alley. Uh, she was the 74th homicide victim in Boston this year. Last year there were 72. The construction worker discovered her body following a trail of still moist blood up a stairway. Wow, what a creepy... There was blood spattered along the walls. The woman's body was found in a front bedroom of the building. Rose was lying on her back on the floor naked except for a lavender sweater which was pulled up to her shoulders. I mean, we hear that all the time, that exact description. There was a tattoo of a rose above her right breast. Police said Rose was sexually assaulted and beaten repeatedly on the head with a blunt instrument and added that, the, that she may have also been beaten about the body before she was killed. The cause of death was listed as repeated blows to the head. Her bare feet were, painted, or were painting or pointing towards a window overlooking Beacon Street and a blood spattered raincoat found nearby a pack of Marlboro cigarettes was also found by investigators police said they had no suspects and were trying to fill in the last hours of Susan Marcia Rose's life in the office of Lieutenant Kelly yesterday the mood was somber Kelly was making arrangements with a homicide detective to meet Rose's mother at the airport last night um, uh, we should have someone meet her, Kelly told him. The detective said he would do it, adding, meeting a mother under these circumstances is not a good mission. Kelly said it was not unusual for Rose's boyfriend to leave her at a bar. He said the, that both he and Rose usually traveled by bicycle, but Monday night she did not have hers. All right, then the next day in the paper... 
Uh, homicide detectives have interviewed 54 people in an attempt to find clues in the beating death this week of Susan M. Rose, 24, formerly of Johnstown, uh, Johnstown pa Pennsylvania, whose body was found in a vacant apartment building in the city's posh Back Bay neighborhood. The woman died of multiple blows to the head, and she had been sexually assaulted. This is one of the most vicious killings I have ever seen, said Detective Lieutenant Arthur Kelly. Yeah, so it's pretty much similar to the other one. So let me go to the next one. Then it was like, they didn't keep covering it. But then the next year, a suspect charged in slaying a back bay, bay, bay woman. Hey, thanks, Kit Kat. And it's, it is Taco Tuesday, so if anybody else would like to join in. Boston police last night served a murder warrant on Scott Callahan, 20, of Brighton in connection with the October 30th slaying of Susan M. Rose. His body was found in, a, in an apartment under construction on Beacon Street. Callahan was arrested early yesterday morning for allegedly attempting to break into a grocery store on Thorndike Street, Brooklyn, according to uh, Brooklyn police. Uh, they said he gave his address as 1412 Commonwealth. Callahan was arraigned in Brooklyn District Court yesterday and taken to Norfolk County Jail. Uh, Rose, 24, a native of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, was beaten to death in the early morning hours and her body left in a pool of her own blood in a building on Beacon Street. Early in the investigation, police theorized that she was slain by an acquaintance. The night before Rose was slain, she was in a Charles Street lounge with a man police at the time described as a boyfriend. And later that night, she went to a friend's apartment to pick up a costume for a Halloween, a Halloween party. Thank you, Eugenie. Her partially clad body was discovered by a construction worker. Rose had moved to Boston about three years ago. She was sexually assaulted and beaten repeatedly on the head with a blunt instrument, police said. So then, uh, yeah, then March 11th, murder suspect held on a $100,000 bond. So Scott Callahan of Commonwealth Avenue pleaded innocent to a murder charge. All right. Then 1981 in July, uh, Callahan acquitted in Back Bay killing. A Suffolk Superior Court jury yesterday acquitted John Scott Callahan, 23, of Brighton of the murder of a Back Bay woman on August, October 30th, 1979. Callahan was accused of killing Susan Rose, 24, of 326 Dartmouth Street. So I guess uh, that's in there. I just want to see what that is. Okay, they said it was just down the... Yeah, it's kind of down. Yeah, I mean, right there, yeah. So you go down the alley, and it's just right there in that building. Interesting. Hey, thanks, Amy Hig. <laughs> You're upside down. What happened? Uh, let's see. Yeah, so her body was found at 285 Beacon Street. Hey, thanks so much, Tracy. According to the medical testimony, Rose died from skull fractures resulting from multiple blows to her head. During the three-week trial before Judge Herbert Abrams, Assistant District Attorney Stephen Needle offered two key witnesses in seeking to link Callahan. Linda Dixon, 19, of New York, testified that Callahan left her and another female in a Brighton apartment at 2.45 a.m. on October 30th, and when he returned three hours later, he had blood on his shirt and arms. Rose's body was found the same morning at 6.50. John Webb, an itinerant carnival worker, alleged that in February of 1980, Callahan threatened to do a Susan Rose on him. Webb said he asked Callahan 
You killed her? Didn't you killed her? Didn't you? He said. Call uh, Callahan responded. Yeah. So what? Attorney Stephen Prones, however, argued there were inconsistencies in the uh, prosecution witnesses' testimony and attacked the credibility of the witnesses. Prones told the jury that the prosecution's case was weak and reminded them that they could not convict Callahan if they found reasonable doubt in the evidence. Now well, there you go. And thank God, because that would have been one of the Innocence Project's That would have been one of theirs. Because that guy had absolutely nothing to do with it. Alright, so here is the Suffolk County District Attorney in Massachusetts here. And the guy actually is from Oregon. September 11, 2023. An Oregon man is expected to be arraigned in Boston Municipal Court Central Division Monday for the murder and rape of 24-year-old Pennsylvania woman in Back Bay apartment building in October of 1979, District Attorney Kevin Hayden announced. John Michael Ermer, 68, was transported from Portland to Boston this weekend by Boston police detectives. He will be charged with murdering Susan Marsha Rose on October 30th, 1979. The day before Halloween. Hey, thanks traveling, Teresa. What the hell? How, how the hell's it going? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. Ding, 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 ding. Isn't this crazy? Yeah, 139 people watching. Man, you don't cover the right thing. That's just. <laughs> Uh, last month, Ermer walked. Look, look how crazy this is. Uh, last month, Ermer walked into the Portland FBI field office and volunteered to agents that he met a woman with red hair at a skating rink around Halloween in Boston in 1979. Ermer said the two walked into 285 Beacon Street, which was under renovation at the time. Ermer said that shortly after the two entered the building, he grabbed a nearby hammer and struck the woman, woman on the head, killing her instantly, really. He then raped her. So this guy raped a dead person. This guy's a sick... Ermer said he fled to New York the next day. Investigators verified that Susan... I'd like to know when he moved to Oregon. I, think, I bet you he moved there recently after there were things like uh, you know, the Golden State Killer, that kind of thing. Hey, thanks, Music City Mom, too. And then it says, Investigators verified that Susan Marsha Rose, who had red hair, was found murdered at 285 Beacon Street on October 30, 1979. The cause of death was determined to be multiple blunt injuries of the head with fractures of the skull and lacerations of the brain. Investigators retrieved a DNA sample from Ermer which proved to be a match with DNA samples preserved from the murder scene. Which is incredible that for in 1979, somebody had the fourth site to uh, store semen before DNA was ever really even a thing. Rose moved to Boston from Jonestown, Pennsylvania and was living in Dartmouth Street at the time of her death. A man was tried and found not guilty we just went over that of rose's murder i actually found that before reading this article uh, nearly 44 years after losing her at such a young age the family and friends of susan marcia rose will finally have some answers this was a brutal ice-blooded murder made worse by the fact that a person was charged and tried and fortunately found not guilty while the real murder remains silent I wonder, that's so, you know what's interesting about that? It's like, I bet they thought, well, we've got our guy. We've got our guy. You know, so they didn't really investigate it after he was found not guilty or something. But then way later, 
somebody was like, you know what, that one, let's see if what, if we can get some closure. And they found a, the DNA profile in there, and it turns out it's not even that first guy at all. And it's somebody else. Yeah. So, let's see. That, and then I actually have another article here. The Daily Mail had one. As well, Oregon man confess. This this one's where there's some crazy, chilling stuff in here. Listen to this: a 68-year-old Oregon man has confessed to the 1979 cold case murder of Susan Marcia Rose, a 24-year-old who was bludgeoned to death with a hammer inside an abandoned building in Boston the night before Halloween. John Michael Ermer walked into an FBI office in Portland, Oregon, last month and told agents he wanted to confess to several murders. He couldn't remember Rose's name. He said he but described details of the grisly crime in an abandoned uh, Back Bay building. Ermer, who was 25 at the time of the killing, described meeting flame-haired Rose at an ice rink, then going to explore the building with her. This is what he said. He's, uh, once inside, he raped her, and then, then it says here, then struck her with the hammer, but that isn't how, that's not the order. The other article was written by law enforcement. He said killing her instantly. And so that's her, that's him. Uh, DNA evidence corroborated his confession. On Monday, he was arraigned in a, you know what's weird? They weren't even looking. That's what it is. That's right. So they weren't even looking for anything here in this case, uh, in Boston. It was like he just turned himself in, and then they went, whoa, and they probably took his DNA and then maybe processed some evidence that they had and went, holy shit, that's a match. They weren't even going to do it. So this guy was going to just get away with it. He just came forward. Investigators continue to probe his claim that Rose was not his only victim. He previously served 30 years in prison for another murder in California. Yeah, he, definitely, he lived in um, San Francisco area. These are the, what I have on him on Ben Verified. Murder, second degree, burglary, second degree, and burglary, first degree. So there you go. In 1983, Ermer was convicted of an armed robbery and murder of a drug dealer who was killed with a hammer, oh man, and a firearm. He, and that's four years after the murder of Susan Marsha Rose. He had been free for 10 years when he walked into the FBI office last month, uh, something his attorney claims should be taken into consideration in his treatment in court. The case had been cold for decades after the 1981 acquittal of another man who had been charged with the murder. So basically for 42 years, likely nobody's been looking. They just felt like the killer got acquitted. The case had been cold for decades. And then it says, a 2005 investigator compared DNA samples. Wait, so I guess in 2005... <laughs> In 2005, investigators compared DNA samples found at the scene to those of several persons of interest. Okay. So interestingly, as time evolved, they probably did realize, maybe in 2005, that the person that they convicted was not the person. So you would have thought they would be doing genetic genealogy here. They only compared it in CODIS to different people. Or maybe they even were able to surreptitiously gather DNA samples from other suspects. I don't know. In 2005, investigators compared DNA samples found at the scene to those of several persons of interest, but Ermer was not one of them. He appeared to have traveled to the West Coast shortly after the crime. Okay, so it wasn't more recently. I thought it was he went to New York right after the crime. Rose's body was found. But isn't that, again, just like we always say, everybody, a lot of these people move as far away as possible. You know, like Boston to California. Oregon's even a little closer, right? 
This was a brutal, ice-blooded murder. Why do they keep saying ice-blooded? Made worse by the fact that a person was charged and tried. Yeah, that was in that article. All right. Well, and this is her actually being taken out of that building. And I bet you if you go down to the street view, it looks almost identical to that. Is it that one? I think it's one at like that door, either that door or this one over here. It's not these ones. Yeah, so there's, yeah, th a little different. Uh, well, no, it has three steps there. So it's different. So there's only one, two, three. It looks more like this one here. Are there two doors? Well, you can only see one, but maybe, I bet you anything that this is, uh, yeah, that's brick right there. Probably painted different. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, see that above the door, that that design right there? That's right here. And then above it, they have like a phone number. So it doesn't have this 285 and 283. That's 285. So it would have been the one on the right, which makes sense. Yeah, so it's that door right there that in that picture. And it's probably, if I go down the street, about like that is the angle, the shot there. So now you can see the this wall and those bricks and everything. I always think it's interesting when you can still see uh, all that. But yeah, I mean, that's just been in this cold case sitting and doing nothing. For years and decades. Uh, 2005 though they knew that the DNA probably likely didn't even match their original suspect at that point. Here, let me see if I can I'm gonna take Susan's picture and make it look more like what she probably looked like. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I thought for sure the uh, Cavalcante case would be solved. I just want it to be done. Just absolutely wiping out the ability to cover anything else with anybody watching. Even the freaks are out watching the, you know, live streams and every second of everything. And there's really nothing going on. It's just people repeating stuff over and over. Um, let's see. I'm trying to open this. And look at look at in the chat right there. Travel and Teresa typed pretty crazy case like ten minutes ago, and that's the last comment that was made. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I know it's lame. It's lame, Ada. You know, it's just lame as hell. Here we go. Uh, image adjustment. And then, uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's probably more like, it. there's no color on it, but that's... Yeah, so, anyway, there's no, it didn't draw out any color from that. <coughs>
All right, then there, then here's another one. So this is in uh, Virginia. It says Fairfax County police are investigating the stabbing death of a Springfield woman. This is 1994, who worked for a uh, Manassas Tire and Auto Repair chain. An autopsy Tuesday confirmed Robin War Lawrence, 36 of 8646, uh, Rosecca Lane of the Crossings community died of multiple stab wounds, according to Fairfax Police. Let, let me see where that is. 30, or 8646, Rosecca Lane. Yep, there's only going to be one of those. So it looks like you can, it only goes to here, so there's like an extra driveway, it's back in there. Let's see, an autopsy Tuesday confirmed Robin Ward Lawrence, 36 of 8646, Rosecca Lane of the Crossings community died of multiple stab wounds. Lawrence was uh, the advertising director of the Merchants Auto and Tire Center chain in Manassas. An acquaintance found Lawrence dead about 12.30 p.m. Sunday when she went to her home to check, uh, uh, to check on her. According to Fairfax County Police reports, uh, let's see, I guess that's, what that, that's the end of the sentence. <laughs> uh, Lawrence was last seen alive about 6.45 p.m. Friday. Police have not determined the circumstances nor the motive surrounding the stabbing. Then two days later, uh, Robin W. Lawrence is remembered as the consummate marketing professional and devoted wife and mother. Her murder last week has left her co-workers at Merchants, Inc. in Manassas wondering who did it and why. We're all baffled by this, said William Craig, vice president of the administration for Merchant Incorporated. No one can understand why so horrible a tragedy as this could happen. You saw her on Friday and say your pleasantries and see you on Monday and you're leaving and that just never happened. The Fairfax County Police are also baffled by the slaying of the 36-year-old woman in her home in West Springfield. They have been unable to determine the circumstances of or the motive for the slaying according to police reports. Lawrence was last seen alive 6.45 p.m. Friday, November 18th. Her husband, who was away for the weekend on business, grew worried when he could not reach her and on Sunday asked an acquaintance to check on her. At 12.30 p.m., the acquaintance found Lawrence dead in her Crossings community home from multiple stab wounds. Craig said he learned of Lawrence's death Monday driving to work. He said he caught a snippet on the radio about a crime and her name was mentioned. He learned the rest of the story at work. By late morning, the phones were ringing incessantly with concerned acquaintances. We were shocked, Craig said. Everybody is very, very upset about this. She is going to be terribly missed. Lawrence was originally from Syracuse, New York. She graduated with a fine arts degree from Carnegie Mellon University and moved to the uh, Washington, D.C. metropolitan area and in 1987 joined Merchants Incorporated. She rose up through the ranks in marketing to earn the title Director of Promotions and Merchandising. She has helped organize numerous promotional events including last year's 50-year anniversary celebration. Her hard work has earned her numerous awards including Employee of the Year, and President's Award. The only way to describe her is very professional, very classy, Craig said. She was very well respected, regardless of when you saw her. She always had a beautiful smile. She was very upbeat. Craig said he knew little of her private life other than she was married and had a two-year-old daughter. I know she loved them both dearly, Craig said. I know her husband, and I have talked with him, 
and he's doing the best he can right now. It's very hard on him, but he has a good, strong family reporting, uh, supporting him. Her death has also left her co-workers unnerved. The company has offered counseling for everyone who wants it and is working closely with the Fairfax County Police to solve the case. I'm sure they will find whoever did this, Craig said. This person will be caught and punished. Lauren's funeral will be held on 1 p.m. Saturday at Pope Funeral Home in Forestville, Maryland. Well, uh, so then you go, all the way to, right now, again, yesterday. Four our officers responded to a call for help. This was in the 8600 block of Reseca Lane, which is West Springfield a District in Fairfax County, Virginia. But leading up to that day, uh, our victim's husband, victim Robin Lawrence, the husband was unable to get a hold of her. He was out of the country on a work trip. Uh, so he asked a family friend to go by the house uh, and see what was going on. Yeah, I think one, or, one family friend discovered, child was in uh, this heinous and tragic scene. Robin was stabbed multiple times to death with her two-year-old daughter just in another room mm -hmm. in the house. Luckily, she was unarmed. Sounds like some other ones we've Our detectives done. went to work immediately, diligently processing the scene, investigating the crime. Uh, and fortunately, during that scene processing, we were able to collect DNA evidence. Uh, at the time, uh, there weren't any matches made on that DNA, uh, but we did collect it and we uploaded it into CODIS, which is a national database for DNA. And years later, that DNA technology would improve uh, and get better. And in 2019, not giving up, our, our cold case detectives resubmitted that DNA. Uh, to a company called Parabon. They're a DNA Parabon. technology company right here in Reston, Virginia. Uh, they developed a profile using that DNA um, and began searching uh, genealogical databases. They use that information to develop a family tr tree, which they provided to our detectives. There we go. And a volunteer who works with our cold case detectives. For three years, our detectives work with that family tree to try to put things together. Ultimately, that led them to Stephen Smirk, who was currently living in New York. Um, when they arrived at Smirk's house, he just happened to be taking his trash out. Uh, they used that opportunity to walk up to him and engage him in a conversation. The results of that, of those efforts, they uh, got DNA, additional DNA swabs and a full confession from uh, our suspect. Uh, they also they learned that uh, in 1994, Smirk worked for the Army out of Fort Myer. He's now a software engineer, and this was really a randomly... Uh, software story. engineer. There was geez. no connection between the yeah. two. So how many else has he done So this? now we have warrants for second-degree murder yeah. for Smirk, and we're, he's in custody in New York, and we're waiting extradition for him to be brought back to New York, to Virginia. We have always treated him as potentially being armed. He's been carrying a pack. Police in Virginia announced the arrest of a man for the 1994 cold case murder of 37-year-old woman. Fairfax County Police Department said Stephen Smirk, 51, is a suspect in the murder of Robin Lawrence, who was found stabbed to death inside her home in Springfield, Virginia, on November 20th, 1994. Lawrence's daughter, only two years old at the time of the murder, was found alone in another room. The nearby 30-year-old the nearly 30-year-old case was solved, police said, after genetic genealogy analysis. Investigators were then able to obtain a consensual DNA sample from Smirk at his home in New York and later a full confession to the crime, police said. Smirk, who was on active duty in the Army at the time of the murder, had been living at the Fort Myers base in Northern Virginia when the killing occurred. He chose her seemingly randomly, and it was heinous. A heinous scene. And I've seen a lot of crime scenes in person and photographs of one, and this one was particularly gruesome. Smirk had no prior arrests, according to, uh, let's see, prior arrest record before being taken into custody this month. And police said they don't believe he was suspected of any similar crimes. Hmm. Smirk had no apparent connection to the victim, police said. He's currently in custody in New York and is awaiting extradition to Virginia. So that's what he looked like uh, when in 
six years before the murders. This is four years after. Obviously, the aspect ratio was messed up probably in this one. I'm sure his head is flatter. You know, it's, you got to take the image and sort of squish it down. I mean, his fa faces don't get thinner like that. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. So, anyways, police collected DNA from the 1994 crime scene, but had no matches to the genetic profile, which was uploaded to the National Database for DNA. The use of the genetic genealogy analysis helped break the case after cold case detectives submitted that DNA to Parabon Nano Labs, a Virginia DNA technology-based company. Investigators were able to develop a profile using that DNA and began searching genealogical databases. They use the information to develop family tree, which provided to, you know I mean, everybody. We we've I've explained that shit so many times. That, uh, Smirk willingly, willingness to cooperate was highly unusual. Isn't that weird to have two of these, like two of those types? Like one guy walked in and gave it up, and this guy admitted to it. So Smirk, who was more working as a software engineer, fully described his involvement. It is beyond involvement. He talked about killing Robin, and he talked a little bit about some more details that I won't go into, but it was a full confession. And it was a confession with more than enough details, coupled with the genetic genealogy research. Davis added, the evidence that we have the strength of this case is overwhelming, and we feel fully comfortable that he's going to be successfully prosecuted right here in Fairfax County. Well, there you go. Show you guys how amazing DNA is. And like I always say, everybody, there's these people sitting around, crapping their pants all around the country, knowing that their day is coming. Uh, prior to, like, I don't think people cared about DNA until about, like, 1990, you know. So if there's any of these murders, or even later, I guess, you know, probably, like, 2000. A lot of careless killers out there prior to that. It was used like in 1989 or something. But most people just weren't really aware or thought about it. Plus they had no way, you know, they didn't think, oh, well hell, there's going to be something called genetic genealogy someday. They likely would kill and then just never commit another crime or a felony so that your DNA wouldn't be put into CODIS. That's all they ever thought about. But then after 2018 with the Golden State Killer, every single one of those people that had that as their plan, I just won't commit another felony, are now sitting around crapping their pants. Okay, and that's one good thing. Even if they're not caught, there isn't a, mo a day where they have a nice peaceful day because they're always wondering, is that knock at the door going to lead to uh, my arrest or something? Thanks, Paulette Leonard. Yeah. Let's see. I don't even know where we're at. We are at 43%. Not too bad, I guess. Little miniature uh, Chloe. Little blue shot down there. There. Let me let me make it. I can probably see that. Look at blue, everybody. <laughs> he heard his name. Awesome. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch back over to what everybody really wants to go over. Let's see. Where is the... Got to get the audio back up and running. Turn down the music. Today's your two phone okay to mail. I thought residents should be wearing an army green top and black shorts with a green baseball cap. Right now. Zero two Paul one. There's no gun involved in this. My status will be okay for now. So we got that in the background, and then we get to go to the. 
uh, flight radar. One two three two zero ACPD. They have like four heli, three helicopters, and all kinds. Stand two to ball four. Sounds like SOs Farmer and Taylor are off tonight. At some point, can you grab the west? Ring yeah, look at all these little planes. The, uh, buildings at ten o'clock. Oh, I think that plane might be part of something there. Oh yeah, all, all these. Yeah, they're definitely doing uh, some patterns in there. Okay. I gotta get everything squared away in here again. Yeah, I've been on for about an hour. Yeah. Uh, the, my title doesn't say anything like, Hey, manhunt on the way! We're going to get some, you know, so there's nobody here. Yeah, and look at the front. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit the title. And put the other stuff at the back. <laughs> there we go. See if that makes a difference. Blue contact SUVs that's blocking and that's why. Alright. 4-3 Paul, 91. I'm close to that. You get the time today. 4-3 Paul, 91, okay? Yeah, I think they've got them surrounded. Uh, maybe I'm in the wrong. 4 2 11. I'll be around the minor street as well. Zero two four one. one There's no gun involved in this. My status will be okay for now. Uh, I thought we already heard that. Zero two four one. 2 one Copy. No gun involved. Okay, now. 5 4 7 Zero two four one. 2 one Copy. No gun involved. Okay. Unit 4-3-Paul, 31. Okay, what about the next one? Unit 4-3-Paul, 31. Lubutlier Road, MS Leesburg Road. Lubutlier Road, MS Leesburg Road. On West Leesburg Road, right on the curb, east of Lubutlier. Air trust complaint. There's a disabled blue contact SUV that's blocking and that's why. 4-3-Paul, 91. I'm close today. You get the time today. 4-3-1, okay? Yes, okay. Unit 4 3 okay? Unit 0 2 Paul, when you're okay? Unit 0 2 one okay? Unit 4 6 I'm going to be 300 Wollerton Alley. By Bernie's house. It's going to be Lincoln yesterday, Sam. 1463. Why? I'm sorry, LYS 1463. It's a Chevy Uplander, minivan, burgundy, one time. Hmm. Trying to find him. Okay. Unit 4 3 Paul 31. Unit 4 3 Paul 31. Lubutli Air Road, MS Leesburg Road. Lubutli Air Road, MS Leesburg Road. On West Leeds Road, right on the curb east of Lubutli Air, for a traffic complaint. There's a disabled blue contact SUV that's blocking and that's why. 4 3 Paul, 91. I'm close to that. You can talk to me. 4 3 Paul, 91, okay? Sam's at a satisfied. Now with the subject. Everything's fine. You can 4 3 Sam's at a okay? Well, it's because I had to jump out of my car. Give me a second. I'm not in the queue. Sorry about that. Half or night. You know, is there a 2 Paul on your status? Units are two following your status. Yeah, there's four on the spot. Units are two following, okay? Four, six. I'm going to be 300 Wollerton Alley by Bernie's house. It's going to be Lincoln yesterday, Sam 1463. Y, or sorry, LYS 1463. It's a Chevy Uplander, minivan, burgundy, one time. 
Command goes to all units operating for murder for Chester County. Your state radios are for monitoring purpose only. Please use CPG for any radio communication. Once again, state police radios are for monitoring only. Use CPG for communication. Is those slide coppers might be hitting over there. They don't let you type in up here a location, which kind of sucks. Oh yeah, so there, there's that. Uh, should just be right up in, kind of over in like this area right here. I don't know what you mean by little ones. I don't know what that means. Command post to all county units. Once again, your state radios are for monitoring purposes only. Please use CPG for radio communications. I'm feeling uh, <laughs> like I'm getting sick or something. Be right up in here. Yeah, see these. I think some of these. I don't know where they went, but so I think they're pretty much in the same place. So it should be right, right, Let's see. right around and like right in there. Oh, I saw a helicopter. This one. Is that one? I don't know. Welcome, Dina. So one ten two out with Paul six. One ten two ten. Not sure where all the, uh, there was like four helicopters there earlier, even right before I did the show, strangely. So I got this, right? Um, kind of right here, right in this area there should be, so these guys doing Crazy. No. Don't see it. Thanks, Ashy Snow. Is that a butt? <laughs> so you mentioned Yeah, it's hard to find anything yeah, wait, okay. once they've uh, and they don't have the helicopters there. Okay, so I might be able to look at this. Okay, there's that, yeah. Okay. And then, if I follow that to here, then this road up here, yep, yep, yep. See, I think this guy's related there. I think you want to refer direct, I it comes around. Yeah, so I think this is, isn't that the school right there? There we go. That's the school. So this plane's definitely part of what they're doing here. And it's also NA. So this is a, like, a plane that, uh, they don't want, you know, doesn't have a name associated with it. But see, that's the school and the, you know, on my map here, it looks like this. 
there's the school uh, we had this circled area here yesterday and here's the area he's flying right over that spot or she whoever's flying at it I don't know why'd you assume it was a guy gray yeah, right there uh, so there's this spot Avion 54 one, fifty four two, your status on Whispering Brook. I mean, that doesn't seem like a random. I don't know how it did this sharp turn there, but. <laughs> uh, why do you think he's dead? Who said that? Who said that? I never thought he was dead. What would me? Yeah, what make you think he's dead? Do you think he got shot by the guy that shot seven times and he got away? Yeah, actually got a copy on the side. Right, he was shot at, but what makes you think he's dead? There was no blood evidence or anything. <laughs> the the LOL um, isn't is misplaced. Okay. Give me on fifty six five. Is there anything else going on here? Or? Yeah, five, 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 five. Yeah, one six, twelve, thirty-one. Twelve, five. So that Fox fifty-nine is just driving five, around again. One twenty-four, Old Lancaster Road. One two four. Twelve, five, copying, clear down. Yeah, but a little guy like that, the way he darts around, he probably could avoid it. Maybe though, Tigress, who knows, right? Okay, I'm going to play the press conference from earlier today. David Sasa, FBI ASAC, the lip, uh, Milligan. The lip sync gets all whacked out. I'm not sure. Facebook always has that issue. It's crazy. It starts off normal, and then there's like this lag of the video and the audio, and I tried to adjust it in the middle somewhere. But. And Rob Clark from the U.S. Marshal's office. There have been a number of significant developments overnight in this investigation and manhunt. At approximately 8 p.m. last evening, a motorist reported seeing a male crouched near the wood line along the south side of Fairview Road, you love what? west of Route 100. The motorist turned her vehicle around in an effort to verify what she saw. As she drove back past, the individual was gone. We had a large number of troopers already in the area and utilized them to form a perimeter around that area. A Border Patrol tactical team was also in the immediate vicinity and went directly to the location of the sighting. They observed footprints in some mud which were identical to the prison shoes worn by Cavalcante. A track was initiated and shortly thereafter both of his prison shoes were located. Information was received from another resident in, the, in that immediate area that a pair of work boots had been stolen from a porch at her residence. The tracking of Cavalcante continued in a northerly direction, and at 10.10 10 p.m., a call was received from a resident on Coventryville Road indicating a short Hispanic male, no shirt, and wearing dark pants, had entered his garage while the homeowner was in it, and that he grabbed a 22 rifle that was leaning in the corner of the garage. The homeowner drew a pistol and fired at Cavalcante as he fled with the rifle. PSP responded and secured that scene. At that time, a green sweatshirt and white t-shirt 
believed to belong to Cavalcante were discovered near the edge of the driveway. The perimeter was expanded to include that area. Overnight, searches of the area within the perimeter were conducted by tactical teams from multiple agencies, teams from Pennsylvania State Police, Border Patrol, ATF, FBI, U.S. Marshals, and Chester County have been active through the night. Teams are currently being rotated out and replaced with fresh teams. Aviation assets, canines, mounted patrols, and numerous other assets have been mobilized and are currently operating in this search area. Upwards of 500 law enforcement officers are engaged in securing the perimeter and in conducting the searches. We are mobilizing additional resources as we speak and are planning for an extended operating period if necessary. Cavalcante is considered armed and extremely dangerous. He is now armed with a 22 caliber rifle with a scope and flashlight mounted on it. Throughout the night, we spent or we sent several reverse 911 messages to residents within a three mile radius of this incident, as well as posted information to social media in an effort to inform the public and to keep them safe. We also notified the affected schools of this incident in the very early morning hours and a decision was made to close schools in the ONJ Roberts School District for today. The current perimeter includes PA 23 to the north. See, that's the, uh, that's the house that he got the, the gun out of that uh, garage there, I guess, and then ran down here and changed clothing out here. All right. PA 100 to the east, Fairview and Nant Mill roads to the south, and Iron Bridge and County Park roads to the west. We ask residents in and around this vicinity to please secure homes, outbuildings, and vehicles. It is imperative that anyone with information about Cavalcante contact us immediately so we can act on it in a timely manner. They can call 911 or our tip line at 717-562. 2987. 717-562-2987. We will take questions at this time. What was the response time, sir, from the moment um, the homeowner called uh, the state police after the uh, shots were fired? What was the response time? Minutes. Do we believe he's injured? We have no reason to believe that he is injured as a result of that shooting. Do you think he's still trying to get south eventually? No, I think he is just trying to survive and avoid being captured right now, sir. Yes. How does this change your tactics when it comes to the fact that he's now considered armed? We have considered him dangerous right from the very start. It changes nothing. Uh, we, uh, we have always considered him to be a risk. Uh, we just now uh, absolutely know that he has a weapon. Do you think he knows where he is? Yes. He knows where he's been there I think, before. yes, he has been in that area before. Do you want to help him to be evacuated? We're not evacuating homes at this point. We are asking residents to be vigilant and again lock their doors. Call us if there is uh, any issue or any concern on their part. Uh, it was several shots. I don't have that number uh, Sir, at this point. Not as a result of anything with the search. We've had a uh, few minor in in incidents or issues uh, with okay. officers out on uh, on the perimeter. All right, guys. So. How about this? If we reach the goal here in the next, uh, I don't know, by 6 o'clock, then I'll come back on later and continue on into the evening. <laughs> All right? So uh, if we can reach the goal in another hour and 10 minutes, then I'll come back on like an hour after that, and we'll do like we did last night. <laughs> All the way into late. All right? So let's do it things but nothing related directly to the search I'm not going to comment on whatever assistance he may or may not have received uh, what I will tell you is that uh, at this point uh, I believe he is beyond assistance and uh, and he is in that perimeter and we will actively hunt until we find him yes Sir, we have been pushing any time we had him contained from the very start. We have seen this as a high priority throughout. 
it is uh, in this particular case uh, the search area is probably uh, close to three miles across east to west and two to two and a half miles north to south. It's a large area, wooded, hilly terrain. Uh, it's not something that it's a matter of just sending a few people in and searching. As I said, we've had uh, uh, a number of tactical teams operating in there through the night. We continue to have uh, teams operating in there now. It will take a long time to clear that. Don't uh, get all started at once, okay? Area, uh, and and we will, but we will continue uh, until we do locate him. You talked about how difficult the area around Long Beach Arms was to search in. Is this a similarly difficult, more or less difficult? Uh, you know, some similar challenges. The uh, the difference here, it's a little larger area, and so anytime you're in an area like this, there uh, you can imagine. If you went out and took a several square mile area and had to try and find a single person who is trying to hide, um, it's a challenge. Do you consider it contained now in that area? Uh, as I've said before, no perimeter is ever 100 uh, percent impenetrable. Uh, we are absolutely there we go, there we go, have Amber. absolutely uh, stood up a very strong perimeter. We will do our very best to contain him in there and to capture him. Your gypsy. There are some creeks in there, yes. The officers have been wearing their gear throughout this entire search. Again, we have always considered him dangerous. Uh, we just know, we, we now have confirmation that he has a firearm. The tactics are the same. It was with the firearm. It was with the firearm. It was with the firearm. Uh, we are focusing on that entire area again. Uh, we have people, supervisors on the ground out there assessing uh, any uh, issues or risks of escape, and we are trying to address any any possibility out there. Uh, they have been searching for him. It was only minutes, but in that amount of time, uh, he traveled a significant distance. We've been utilizing dogs, uh, and we've been utilizing tactical teams. Thanks, so, uh, you Google, know, again, Google. just because we find a footprint doesn't mean we necessarily know which direction he traveled. And in fact, uh, he had traveled south and then went back north. So um, it's not a matter of just charging into the woods and knowing that, you know, it's that away. Uh, it's a matter of trying to track him. It's a matter of sweeping methodically through the uh, through the woods, checking buildings and so forth. We don't have the luxury of just charging up the nearest trail and hoping that's the direction he went. I don't believe so, sir. I think uh, at that point he was being pushed by the teams that were pursuing him from the original sighting. I think it was, a, a, in my opinion, I believe it was a crime of opportunity. I think he went in there tr probably trying to hide. The garage door was open. He didn't, uh, I, I believe, uh, recognize that the owner was in there. And I think he was probably looking for a place to hide, ran for that garage, saw the firearm, grabbed that, encountered the homeowner, and fled with the firearm. What's the square mile area now that you, that you are searching? I don't know, what is that, uh, 8 to 10 square miles, probably? You've had two instances now uh, of Cavalcante picking up supplies that really changed the search, whether it was a van with the keys in it or a firearm that was somewhat unsecured. Do you have any plans to change the messaging in this new containment area to really you know, emphasize the importance of life? I don't know how much more I could emphasize it, sir. I've been very clear about securing things. We have sent, as I said, several reverse 911 messages through the night, again, emphasizing that point and telling residents, uh, uh, you know, what they can do, just advising them the situation. I can't be any clearer that they need to secure things. We're working with a variety of maps. Uh, we have county emergency management people on site and have had them on site here in, uh, in the command post. Uh, so that uh, we do have access to uh, uh, the available information. Sir, you said you're not an officer that passed out this morning around 9 a.m. 
I, I don't. Uh, I was told that it is not a life threatening uh, situation, but I don't have any other Sir, information. You said a matter of time before he is captured. It feels like you're getting very close. How many law enforcement officers do you have on the ground right now? Are we at that 400 number? Uh, I would think we're, we're well past the 400. We are probably around 500 right now. It's very fluid. We have people uh, still coming in. We've been releasing people that were held overnight. We have people that have been on duty for 20 hours, 24 hours or more, and we're, we're relieving them. We held people over because of the seriousness of the situation last night. So we're working through replacing all of those. We have people coming in. Uh, I can speak for the state police from all over Pennsylvania to support this effort uh, and to be able to sustain it. And, and our partner agencies are doing the same, uh, not only from Pennsylvania, but from out of state as well with various specialty teams. No, this is the area where he left the uh, the van. It's very close in proximity to where the van was abandoned and where I talked about that I believed he was in the woods and uh, was likely hiding. Uh, I, I, I really can't provide any more detail right now. What I can tell you is, again, he encountered him. He did call us very quickly. Uh, he did what uh, we asked him to do with, with regard to that. Uh, Coventryville Road. How many times did he fire at him? Uh, I, I don't have that number of shots. Several shots, I was told. Reports that Cavalcante stole a pair of boots. Are those accurate? Yes. I mean, he's pretty resourceful. You got to give him that. Like, he literally. I mean, he's just a absolute nut job. But I mean, just think about how weird it is. Like, okay, here's this guy running around, and somehow he's able to get into a house and get a gun, change clothing, and you know, a couple different times. Obviously, eating stuff here and there. I mean, it's just uh, it's weird. I mean, how does he go get a gun while he's on the run? That, that's just amazing. I'm sorry, which homes are you referring to now? Hey, thanks, Those Amy. Homes, yeah. Well, the ring door Who's upside camera down. is nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's not in this uh, search area. And the home uh, with the garage that, uh, that we talked about is within the search area, and we are actively Well, not too far to go area. out to that, you guys. We can do it. I don't know. Do you have sense how many other houses you might have been in? I don't have reports of any other houses that he's been in. Doesn't mean he hasn't been, but we don't have reports of those. Sir, what has gone wrong here? I mean, have you underestimated him? Is he just that much of a worthy adversary? Sir, I don't know why you would think something has gone wrong. Our law enforcement people have done an amazing job tracking him and locating him. That proverbial needle in the haystack, and they've located that needle repeatedly. Okay, well, if you located the needle, how come he didn't pick the needle up? You know, like... Normally, if you're looking for a needle in a haystack, you, when you find the needle, boy, you make damn sure you pick that sucker up, right? <laughs> you don't need to find the needle six times, okay? I mean, but anyways, I think they have been working hard. I think they have, the environment they're working in is incredibly challenging for everything. The helicopters, the um you know, you see this helicopter earlier today was flying low and blowing the foliage around to see down further. I mean, it's a nightmare, you know. Who's helping him, Cindy? You keep saying that people. Oh yeah, you mean accidentally helping him? Yeah. Yeah, like, hey, I've got an idea. Let's leave our keys in our unlocked van right on the perimeter. Hey, I've got an idea. Let me leave a loaded 22 rifle with a scope for God's sakes in my in my garage. Nobody's gonna take that thing. I mean, what's next? A, a keys to an airplane? <laughs> with an instruction manual sitting on the <laughs> on the seat when he gets into it 
That's what I'm seeing right now. Goal! We're not quite there yet, but we're almost there. We got another hour to go, and then, then we'll definitely come back on a little bit later. You know, the questions yesterday about is he out of state, is he somewhere around the country, and we told you we were actively searching in this area. Our people have done an amazing job. I'm very proud of the work that they have you done. You live right next to there, continue Amy? to do. There is nothing has gone wrong. Our agencies are all working very well together, and, uh, and, and I believe we will be successful in the long run. Oompa, loompa, doopa, dee, dee. That's what this guy is. He looks like one of those little Oompa Loompas running around hiding. We have always considered him to be very dangerous, and I have stressed that in every one of my press conferences and in every briefing that I have given to our well, people. Well, he's that a lot more dangerous searching. now. I can we tell considered that. him desperate. We considered him dangerous. All this does is confirm for us that he has a weapon. Is he desperate enough to use that weapon on the target law enforcement? He's killed two people previously. I would suspect that he's desperate enough to use that weapon. Yeah, nobody said to not leave it, hey, Ashy Snow. Right? I'm sorry, is there? Sir, we are actively working that area. Um, I don't. I don't know what other efforts we could make to prevent a, a carjacking. We've asked people to secure everything. Um, anything that occurs in there, we will be uh, on top of. And uh, you know, we're making every effort to find him as rapidly as we possibly can. People can leave their homes. That's entirely up to them. We have not tried to direct anybody to shelter in place. We have simply asked them to secure their homes. It's up to them if they want to leave. If they need assistance, they can let us know, and uh, we will work with them to make sure they can get out of the area. Does the House of Coventry Bill have a video of the interaction from last night? No. I'm sorry, what was that? I have been in regular communication with the governor's office and the governor himself. The governor has been closely monitoring this entire situation, has offered any resources that are necessary, has offered to contact uh, other states if, if need be. So he's been uh, closely monitoring this. He's on top okay, of it. Okay, thanks, and, Jason. Uh, and and uh, we continue to keep him advised. Uh, he did not, uh, to my knowledge, make any other aggressive moves. They confronted each other. Um, the the shots uh, were fired, and he fled. Uh, and I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't think it's spelled like about that. The uh, the homeowner at this point. Do you know how close they actually got to each other, the homeowner and Capricante? Uh, it was a number of feet. Anything you'd like the public to know at this juncture? I know you've. No, it's Pfizer, not Pfizer. No, I think again, uh, I, I stress, please secure things and not just within the perimeter in the in the vicinity around it. And please call us immediately if they see something suspicious, if they believe that Cavalcante might be in the area. We need that information. Again, it's a large search area. We're going to very thoroughly search it, but their assistance is um, is very much appreciated. Okay. What did they say on the scanner specifically? We, we are pushing through with the terrain with tactical teams, but it is uh, uh, not... So he's uh, trying to get out of there. Not really practical to suggest that we could line up uh, a line... Did he go into here? ...long and, uh, and push... And then from there, boom, one long boom, and he's just like hopscopping. He's out of there. We've got to methodically search it. We've got trained teams that are doing that. And, uh, and and we're going to cover that ground as quickly and as thoroughly as we possibly can. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll get additional information to you as uh, things end. Okay, let me go back to this one. Where was that part? Okay. The current perimeter includes PA 23 to the north. All right. Let's get that marked in really, fat, really quick. Uh, PA 23. There it is right there. Okay, so let's just draw some lines on here. PA 23. Got that. 
Let's do uh, like five here. Thank you, traveling Teresa. Where are you traveling to, Teresa? <laughs> oh, John Walsh, God, that, these guys. You know, just put John Walsh and um, who's that idiot? Um, Bale Bondsman guy. Hell, I can't even remember his name right right this second. Yeah, let's put them all together now. I mean, I like Walsh, but I mean, he shows up on all these things like he's the guy that's going to find something. Yeah, the bounty hunter. Really? Dog the bounty hunter, everybody? I think what John Walsh has done is amazing with that organization, but I'm talking about like lately he has shown up during these various cases lately with Dog the Bounty Hunter. Like they show up together, like uh, separately, and they're battling, battling it out. Yeah, BTK's daughter, she's all over the place. Yeah, just All right, let's do the, I mean, she's not an expert on anything except her, what her, her, father was like when she was growing up like she didn't know anything about what he was doing at the time all right here we go let me, let me get this pa 100 to the east all right pa 100 so now we're here to the east so let's just kind of draw this around uh, does it keep going down here is that what this is yeah that's still 100 so we can kind of Let's just add it further down, just because we don't know where it, where the next border part will be. Fairview and Nant Mill Roads to the south. Okay, uh, Fairview Road though. What is? I just saw it earlier. It's kind of like, isn't it that what this is? That's Prizer. Nant Nant Mill. There's Fairview. Okay, Fairview. All right, so then this needs to go up here. Okay, like that. And then what did you say? An Iron Bridge and County Park roads to the west. Okay, so Iron Bridge. Anybody know where that is? What do you call that? Iron Bridge? Okay, right there. So we go down, down, like this, up, like this, ding. Oh, crap. Did it wrong. Where is the other... Shit. <laughs> Alright. So. Actually, I can... Alt out of here. Right? Isn't that? Yeah. The same thing. Okay. Like that. Fair view. Iron Bridge, and then he had another name of the road. What was the other one that he said? Here, hold on. Reverse 911 message. Reverse 911 messages to residents within a three-mile radius of this incident, as well as posted information to social media in an effort to inform the public. The current perimeter includes PA 23 to the north. PA 100 to the east, Fairview and Nant Mill Roads to the south, and Iron Bridge and County Park Roads to the west. We ask residents in and around this vicinity to please secure homes, outbuildings, and vehicles. It is imperative that anyone with information about Cavalcante contact us immediately so we can act on it in a timely manner. They can call 911 or our tip line at 717-562. 
562-2987. We will take questions at this time. Minutes. Do we believe he's injured? We have no reason to believe that he is injured as a result of that shooting. Did you hear that? No, I think he is just trying to survive and avoid being captured right now, sir. All right, so that's the yes. area right here, this whole area. We have considered him dangerous right from the very start. It changes nothing. Uh, there we go. We, uh, that's we a good have way always considered him to be a risk. Uh, we All right, so there you go. See that? That's the area now. I can probably let me move this comment out the screen there. See that right there? Boom, 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 boom. Well, look at that. Amy Hig got us to the goal. That was that's amazing. Sorry, Gray, you're coming back on. <laughs> I don't get a break. Well, thank you. Many of the jab will stop it. Don't know what that means. All right, guys, so we got some progress on the map here. We got that. Get this back on. P13 to S1 towards just the center complete mode. Hell, Amy Higg almost did the entire goal on her own. I think, what is that? Um, something, Amy Higg. And also... Uh, Let's see, it was uh, three, two, Amber three. Maiden, your Gypsy, and Dina, and then also Kelly Gal 3 earlier, too. Down. So, anyways, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Oh, there's the helicopter three, now. All right, back in business. There's the school right there. Helicopters flying around. And looks like another one heading into the scene. That's actually B-407, the one that's always there. Or it's actually just a, um, that's not even a call sign. I think that's just the style. So we're, they're about ready to, to uh, get back in the area, you guys. Eight oh one reported sighting in search zone on Prizer. Law responded and unfolded. Huh? 801. What does that mean at 801? What, what does that mean? I reported Not sighting in search Three zone on Prizer. Law responded and unfounded. Okay. So the one on Prizer was unfounded. We can take that off of the, the map here. I think that was uh, Prizer. Yeah, right here. This sighting is unfounded right here. Is that what you're saying? Okay. 104 to dispatch. Wilson Hall is clear. And three. One oh four to dispatch, Wilson Hall is clear. And three. Shazza from the ambulance fifty six one. Mm hmm Yeah, one five four ninety one okay. P thirteen to S one towards just the center complete no it's copy. Three to a copy. So the perimeter here is like this. One oh four to dispatch. Right Ocean Hall is clear. And three. Shazer from ambulance fifty six one. Six seven Mary fifth. Four one Paul thirty five again. Unit 4 1, 12, 35, okay. Unit 6, 7, 12, 31, proceed. That one's getting gas. They're, they're just trading minutes. out spots, I guess. 
chat there for me if you want the 56 one. Or fuel, I guess, is the term. Captain America. Stand for you, Mr. Rick. 3 2, I copy. 10 4. 55 is dispatched to 1100 block of Westchester Pipe to be routed. So, Rock, you need but somebody else who has lights on their tag, you'll be fine. 104 is dispatched. Wilson Hall is clear. They're pretty far and outside three. the perimeter here. Yes, it covers one thirty one But that was the perimeter earlier today, so maybe oh, it's oh, bigger. Thirty one, we'll need two for forty six. Chester from ambulance fifty six one. Fifty four thirty, Chester, fire please you're gonna remain on scene for now. <laughs> six out of America. <laughs> What? Oh, you got that to what, 14 times what? Oh, you got that to what, 14 times what? Oh, you got that to what, 14 times what? Oh, it looked like they had it was wider. So we just always look at that right there. There's the school right there. <laughs> you just make the sound yourself. Yeah, it's ten square miles now. Well, he must think he's got out of there, then. What happens if I go, like, to, hold on, not that one, not that one. I take this, and I went, ch 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 Sure thing, you can text me, uh, the 2746, text me Joe's number. Mid U430, Chester, fire police are going to remain on scene for now. <laughs> Six out of America. Nine three King ninety eight, copy clear, Pfizer. Oh, that's cool. Look at that one, huh? And that is 5.12 square miles. So you're saying it's 10 you square miles? Very 50, I copy. That means it's much bigger than that now. Double that you know, size. Copy clear, I bet you, how much you want to bet that they move the perimeter right up into here? I bet you anything, it's right there. It's just like this. And they added these woods here. And the perimeter goes up like this. I don't. I think he'd be heading north instead of south because uh, he's already come from here. He went over here and he went over here. So I would think he's gonna. He's you know somewhere up in there. Like yeah, I bet you it's right up in here. Do have they? Do they have any maps out there extending the perimeter? Like uh, official maps that you could email me. Something that's been put out in the last couple hours. Or, Oh, Chloe's going nuts. What are you doing, Chloe? Thank you, Gloria Butari. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, railroad tracks in perimeter? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure they've shut off any trains stopping or going. Five four ninety one. Here's Thomas. What do you guys think? You guys think I bet you anything it goes up like that. That looks like a perfect little extension of a perimeter. Cuz over here it's hard to You know the one time I tried to dig to China when I was a kid and I pulled out a porcelain pig made in Japan. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I'm pretty close."
I know you don't believe me, so I'm going to show you the picture anyway. Look at this. Watch this. Look at it. Right there. It's kind of a cool little porcelain pig. Look at that. And the, the leg's broken. I super glued it together a lot of years ago. But I think you can still make out the... Well, it says made in Japan underneath that hole there. But there it is. <laughs> It actually is a real thing that uh, wasn't made up story. Yeah, maybe it is. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty sweet, really. It's like, uh, unfortunately, it broke its leg and I super glued it together. Probably lost the value quite a bit because it was whole when I got it. It's actually kind of a cool treasure to dig in a yard and dig like four feet down and there's this, well, I mean, here's the thing. Why was it there, you know, like? <clears throat> Corner two zero six, okay. I wonder if they're including this area here now, also, because that was part of the. Hmm. So that's interesting. I don't know what they're doing here. If anybody has the perimeter, though, send it to me. PA State Police posted new perimeter on Twitter. Oh, did they? Can you send me the link to it? Or, or you just type in Pennsylvania. Okay. Hash to Pennsylvania State Police. Jesus. First thing I come up to is all these people on drugs. I don't know. Can you send me a link to the post? Because I don't see one just immediately saying. In the entranceway of the Bradford Plaza for a black female lying on the sidewalk. Call or request a well being check. Walking or in a car? Okay. PA State Police. Okay, in South Coventry Township area. Okay, this is one hour ago. Okay, I, I see it. It's a. It's not a. Link. Okay, let me let me try to do this again. Let's take this off now, and I, let's just get rid of this whole thing. Okay, I missed the first part of that. In a car or walking? Alright, so it says uh, routes 23 and 100. Alright, so okay, 23 and 100, okay. Mount Mill Road and Iron Bridge and Country. I think I had the right one. <laughs> That's not 10 miles though, but it's the same thing they put in there. That's what we had. To secure building properly and it, yeah this is one hour ago it's the same thing that we had already and they said iron bridge okay Nat Mule roads and iron you know, bridge negative no responder at this time they are attempting to notify with no answers on the call list okay I'll be clear somebody's coming out let me know please. I got rid of it for no reason I have uh Two street lights to report that are out. Nant meal. What kind of lights? 378 can be an SUV and they're rising. Oh, so they're way over here. That's a little different, I think. Alright. Routes 23 and 100. Oh, yeah, and then Fairview. 
Let me just see where it is mentally. Okay, fair view. The Nant Mule Road. Okay, yeah, it goes way over here. And then, so let me let me just try drawing this as we talk about it. I want to start way over here. Well, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. But I see it. Uh, Fairview, Nant Mule, and Iron Bridge County Park. Okay, yeah, so then it goes up. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this is pretty much what we had. Let's just do it. Country Park Roads, okay. Permanent main entrance off. Dang, I'm like. Okay. 43 Paul 41. Okay, 43 Paul 41. 43 Paul 41. I have one for Ben Boomer back from 2017. I don't know if that's still anything with the owner's school or not. Uh-oh. I already went too far. Or did I? No, I think it goes to here. No? Shit. I just had it a second ago. Oh, way down there. There we go. Nap meal. Alright. You know what, guys? I'm loving this product. Just for 44 years, third of my face. 44 units. 43, Paul 41. 43, Paul 41. 43, Paul 41. I have one for Ben Boomer back from 2017. I don't know if that's still anything with the owner's floor or not. Yep, Iron Bridge Road. Yeah. Alright. 65 again. Yep, Matt Mill. There's a fair view, yeah. I'm just going backwards here. To draw the perimeter that they. Have in there. It's a fair view. And this is. Uh, now we're on the 100. Or I think it's 100. Alright, no. 65 again. Yeah. 65 again. Yeah. How long now was it? It's off of uh, Cloverly back here. It's all locked up. I'll see if uh, I can give somebody a call. Otherwise, I'd pop the hood and disconnect the battery. Just for 44 units, third to my base. 44 units, okay. 43, Paul 41. Okay, there you go. 41. Hey, Paul 41. I have one for Ben Boomer back from 2017. I don't know if that's still anything with the elementary school or not. This is 112. It looks like the you same thing. That's only it's ten miles around right, the perimeter, but five point two square miles. Okay. So there you go. That's the perimeter currently. They it said an hour ago. All right. You said look up what the whole time. No idea what you're talking about. Hey, all right. Yep, going to be on a little bit later too. I mean, I might just leave it, I guess, like, so you can listen to the scanner, I guess, you know. But I'll turn off the mic and everything and just be the helicopters and... Just announce, South... Co oh, you got another one? <laughs> Shit. 
South Coventry Routes 23100, Fairview, and Man... What, what's Man Mill Road? Are you sure that's... Are you cutting and, and pasting that? I don't see a Man Mill Road there, so I don't think you have that right. And Iron Bridge and Country Park Road. Right, yeah, so, so this is like the same yeah. thing. Uh -huh. There we go. There we go. Yeah, fair Copy. view here, yeah. Spell that one. I don't know what, what when you're saying man. Oh, you mean Nant, Nant Mill. No, yeah, I've got that one already. So this it hasn't changed then. You know, because look at it, it's twenty three to one hundred, right? That's fine. I got nothing to worry And over. Um, to one hundred, and then Fairview Road, which is right here. So there's one hundred. Fairview Road. Then Nant Mill. Oh, I can see flashlights in the back of what I mean who it is. I only see one light. Then, nothing else seen and nothing heard. Hold on. Sixty five, yeah. And then Iron Bridge Road. And then Country Park Road. Back up to um, twenty three up there. So yeah, I've already got I've already got this correct here. So it's only five point something square miles. Alright. It's not it's ten miles around. Huh? I'm not sure what a TPS report is. Chloe and Chloe are going nuts over here. <laughs> what are you doing, Chloe? Oh my god. Holy shit, I've never heard her bark this loud. Copy. <laughs> Chloe, 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 Chloe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All she's doing is twirling and barking. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I received a call from a Mary Ann Carcella. I think she got a call from her son. I believe she's going to commit suicide. She does not know where her son is. That's so funny. She's finally hysterical and screaming and crying. So loud, though. She's finally getting her voice. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think Copy. she's going ding ding bat. Oh, I got nothing to talk about. Six seven Paul eighty one Westtown News fifteen eighteen Manly Road apartment B as on Bravo number seven. For well being Jack received a call from a Mary Ann Carcella. I think she got a call from her son. I believe she's going to commit suicide. She does not know where her son is. She's currently mm. hysterical and screaming and crying at this time. Okay. Yeah, for your pen, I... So that's one of their places they had before. So obviously he's heading north here. If they've extended it up here. LPRs have that vehicle leaving our area around 645. Not so look at the these are just it's just brutal for law enforcement these are this is so thick this time of year this whole perimeter is I bet you 90 or 85 percent thick wooded areas I'm not sure what you're saying big Jordan you, no did idea. you get that all right LPRs have that vehicle leaving our area around 645. Not sure. Look at that. That's what it looks like in there, you guys. Just nuts. Yeah, do you just want to get some details from her? We have the report here from earlier. We'll try giving it a girl. Thank you, report. WNC Granny. LPR. Oh, and classical guitar. Area around 645. Not sure. <laughs> How's it going? At, uh, I'll be clear. Make sure to watch the first two stories we did. They're pretty interesting. Two solved cases, you guys. Two solved cases. WNC Granny. Classical guitarist.
He-Man. This search would be much easier if it were winter with snow on the ground. Well, yeah, well, not uh, mainly because there's no leaves on the trees, Cameron. I showed a, the other night when we were going. Let me see if I can read. I think I can find that where that was just in my mind. It was right here where I had the uh, this area right here. Watch this. This will give you a great representation. Right, of the, look at that. See that right there? That's what it would look like if it was March. This is a street view from March, everybody. Yeah, you just watch this. From her. We have the report just keep watching the her. screen here. You'll get a great uh, uh, vision of what this looks like. Watch. So that's still okay, March. That vehicle, still March. Still March. Not still March. Adam 3, I'll be clear with you. Still March. Absolutely yeah, see through those. Oh, oh my God. Call. Look at the difference. There. There. You see that? 41, could you repeat? That's what it looks like today. Just like that. This is an August shot. See how thick that is again? Compared to that. So if this was March, hell, he would just be... I mean, I was telling, uh, when I was looking at this, it was what a great spot to use would be a creek like that to get around and hiding underneath this undercut banks and shit like that, man. But anyways, um, imagine being able to hide in that same spot, but when it looks like a freaking jungle. It isn't even close to the same. Look at this. So he's just it's in high there, high. and it just... Adam 3, I'll be clear with you, be safe. You know, 5 3 4 one I just got off the call. Did you just need to get on a phone call? 41, could you repeat? I just got off my overflow. Would you like me to get a bonus on call? Unit 2 5, Sam 2, here is 5. Unit 2 5, Sam 2, look, 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 look. Here, I'll be back in a second. Yeah. You see Catherine Nisi at 113 Price about a problem she's having with one of the staff members. 10 for 1 call 6. 10 for 3 2 direct. One ball six. One ball six. Ten for three two direct. Unit two five Sam two okay. Yeah, it's okay. Checking the wood line now. Unit two five Sam two. Copy checking the wood line. You see Catherine Nisi at 113 Price about a problem she's having with one of the staff members. 10 for? 1 ball 6. 1 ball 6. 10 for 3 2 direct. Unit 2 5 Sam 2, okay. Adam 3, just so you know, I did hear it. One call four two. Hey, Mason, it's 92, 91. Yeah. You see Catherine Nisi at 113 Price about a problem she's having with one of the staff members. Yeah. One call six. One call six. Yeah, for three, two, direct. Yeah, two, five, Sam, two, okay. 31, I'm going to hear it. In your second house for for a second. She believes she just left the door unlocked, but she just wants someone to walk through it for. Adam three, just so you know, I did hear it. I got it. Adam three, I copied that right. I didn't realize. Cameron's the I misinformation TV. man. Let's see. Maybe not this time though. Maybe we'll get lucky. Where? Where where'd they find it? I didn't hear it. Where'd they find it? Who said it? 
Who said that they found a backpack? <laughs> yeah, well, you you had a few things a little weird last night, okay? Yeah, one's thirty-one. Which one is it? Where'd you find it, Cameron? He can still speak, Keith. Chris, was this stemming from something suspicious? No, she ran out of the house earlier today for her husband to go to the hospital. Saw her came back and the door was unlocked. She thinks she did. She forgot to do it. Uh huh. Okay, found a backpack. Okay. Where? I did, where where they found the backpacks more important? Okay, so they found found it at five forty three minutes ago. One four four two ten ninety. Okay, Fortune. where was it found? One six four thirty one in the area of one thirty four. Chris, was this stemming from something suspicious? No, she ran out of the house earlier today for her husband to go to the hospital. Thought her came back and the door was unlocked. Oh, no, there's three of them out here now. There's that school again. They're still, most of them are flying down here. They haven't ventured up here. I wonder if they still think he's... I mean, the school is right uh, here, so yeah, I guess they are kind of up in this area. Yeah, they're flying right up in there, and then up like so that. Two was stopped down First Street from Goshen on a blue Kia Forte times two on ninety two duration. So it's out thirty one. All right. Inside of there. Yes, he's right, Sam. Okay. Well, Paul says. Sam, two cops in the stop. First Street from Goshen on a blue Kia Forte. Times two. I'm not even. I don't think he would go up in a tree. The reason I don't think that is because once he's seen in the tree, he has nowhere to go. He can't evade anybody. So I don't. I'm not buying. He's up in a tree. He might have been in trees at. Um. I don't know when he would do that because he could be spotted by the. The helicopters. Okay. <laughs> yeah, six seven Sam fifty one. Well, I I can Sam believe it because we. I just showed so you guys a minute ago the talks. terrain. It's it's thicker than. It's just Stop brutal. Station and pick up. Killinger's keys from the office in case that back door alarm go off, please. Look at all of this area here. Unit 26, Adam 1, copy your staff, 300 block, West 7th right. Road. Unit 67, Sam 51. All one. Okay. That's what they did in Unit the, 67, uh, You're talking 51. about Predator. Bait Jordan. Unit 26, Paul 11, copy your room. The movie no Predator. Weapons, no in talks. Stop by station and pick up Killinger's keys from the office in case that back door alarm go off, please. Unit 26, Adam 1, copy your staff, 300 blocks, West 7th right. Road. Unit 6, 7, Sam. Yep, 51. so we got 13 more minutes, and then I'll come back on with a. We'll just pick up where we Unit left 6, 7, off. Unit 6, 7, 81, 452, Eaton Way, 452, like Eaton Way. EMS soon dispatched out for a CBA. Station 21 Ambulance, Ware Presbyterian, 103 Cambridge Court, Oxford Borough, for the emotional disorder scene is not secure. I bet you haven't seen too many live streamers put this perimeter like this with the transparency and that accurate, right? Roger that. 
Station 21 uh, Ambulance. I, I do Fire admit it's an advantage. It's, Cambridge Court. it's an advantage to be at the scene, scene is not parked somewhere. But I think it's interesting to see stuff from the night, from above, right? Like to, you know, sort of map things out and, and uh, you know, as things unfold, you can kind of see where he might be going. Be nice, it'd be neat to have both Here, things going at the same time. Just I'll tell you what would be sweet is to have like someone like me and then a on the ground reporters that they're just on my show, you know, not reporters, but freaks, right? Like that can come on using uh, like Zoom, like we did with uh, Amber one time. And, and they come on, and that's just a camera. <laughs> like up in the corner, you know, and then we just sort of like that's always playing, and then you can cut back to that, ask you know, have them fill you in with stuff. I think it'd be sweet because then you would really have a great perspective of everything. Yeah, like like somebody could be live streaming, and you say, yeah, they're right here. You know, for example, that JLR guy the other night, he was part right. of, he was. Um, he, was, he was right here at conservatory. He was Fisher, actually specifically, I think, on this island right there. Uh, one, of, one of the islands right here. I think it was, was it right here? Let me see. Yeah, they were all right here on this little island. And they were all filming down that road, right? That was like three or four nights ago. All right. So that would be interesting to be able to say, yeah, that's right here. This is where the cops are. And then later we saw this map where all this area was where they lined up the vehicles. And he escaped that area. He went all the way up to, uh, well, actually he escaped the area by stealing a van from this uh, dairy farm here, Bailey, uh, Bailey's Dairy. And when you zoom in, you see a van sitting here. But I know he has the van with the white refrigerator unit on the top. So now there's two of them on the street view. For some reason, they put street view here. And here's the white one. So he stole this van right here. Okay. And then when he, after he stole that van, he drove up to up north here. Northeast, really. Unit 2, 5, Sam 2, copy your app suspicious condition. 2745, Conestoga um, Road. I think Hundred it was... thought that he heard someone on the porch. On, Ten minute time delay. Caller went outside to check. Didn't see anything. The did hear branches cracking in the woods. Where's that Caller cemetery? also advised there's an abandoned barn. Left of the residence close to Pinehurst Drive. Three two or ninety two. Yeah, so it was up in up in this right. area. Unit two seven, Paul thirty eight, copy stop, five hundred block, Pauling Road. And then he Somehow he drove back Just down here and he dumped... No, it was over here, sorry. Okay. It was over here, the uh, Zion Lutheran Church area, Probably. where he was spotted on ring camera. Then he headed over this direction, dro dropped off the van. Now, I don't know what some of these sightings are here. I, I think some of these are false here. I think he dropped the van and he hasn't left this area the whole time. That's what I think. All right, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, where was that? Uh, the van. It's weird how when it, everything shifted around, so now I'm having a hard time finding. I know I listed where the van was dropped off, but now I'm wondering. Was it? Oh, it was it over? Wasn't it over here? Oh, there it is. Van was dumped right on the corner of where they're at now, and then after that. He, he might have gone down in this area because remember there was this Wind Hollow and East Nat Mill sightings. But look at this absolute forest there. And then maybe he comes out right here. I mean, look at that. He, he's in the forest. So I think he's traveling by dense forest, you guys. And I think he comes to the edge of it, looks. And if he sees any kind of, uh, you know, if there's any opening at all, he bolts over to the next sort of island of forest, right? 
And so he goes over here and um, and then there's all kinds of sightings. There was something at the school maybe, uh, per perhaps in the woods over there. I mean, there was all tons of sightings. Um, there was an injured officer here that has nothing to do with it. Sighting right down in this area, and they think he's gone up into here. Unit 2 5, Sam 2, your status. And then where's the area where he got the. Hold on a second. Yeah, and then look where. So they know he, he came in here. Van was dumped, right? Then he got shot at right around in this area. So what makes them think he didn't, at that point, make his way up into this area? I mean, how do they know that? Because that's so close to being out of there. You know, so the rifle's stolen, I think, in that area. And then, yeah, I think we went down to Street View, didn't we, earlier? Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if that was the right spot. We had the right area earlier. Do you guys remember what the address for that was? I, I think I have it, a pin for it somewhere. I feel like I'm missing it now, though. I don't see it. It was something... God, wasn't it? Not like 926 or something. I do not remember. There used to be a, a spot though that the... I mean, I have right here the 22 rifle was stolen, but I think that was updated. Unit 25, Sam 2, your status. And remember, we just looked a minute ago and I showed you the actual. Uh, Unit 25, Sam Garage door. <laughs> you know, it was right there, so now I don't remember. I think they said it in the press conference. If anybody remembers what that is, let me know. Mm, don't know. Probably not too bad over there. Still Unit September. Unit 25, Sam 2. Probably checking the woods to the rear of the residence. Unit 25, Sam 2, your status? Oh, 2034. Unit 25, Sam 2. Probably still checking. Are you sure that's the number? It sounds right but it felt like it was a little different than that it was something like that but not it could be right though oh i guess no nah, that wasn't where it was yeah i don't think no nah, that wasn't the spot Okay, that might be right. Let's see. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And there, you can see it on. Let's see, rifle stolen. And then I think when we go down the street view, right? Is that? No, that doesn't sound right either. <laughs> I'm going to have to go watch. That doesn't look like what we were looking at earlier. Um, so that's not right. Yeah. We had the correct one earlier when we were listening to the uh, press conference. It, they mentioned it on there, I believe. I, I think they did. Yeah, we actually pointed out where we were looking at the garage door and where he uh, lost some of his items. Did I shut down a window that had... No, it's still there. Yeah, nothing new has come up for a while. Okay, 1164. Okay, let's see if that works or not.
And I'll tell you though, if it's no, nah, I don't think that, I don't think that's right either. Yeah, that's not what it looked like. I went directly from what he said and put it in there, and you could see exactly what they were talking about—a long driveway, the garage door. <laughs> yeah. Not pleasant. Unifor two Paul seventeen, copy your stop. Seaford Road and Warhol Road. Unifor two Paul eleven, copy your stop. One hundred block Lancaster Avenue. Unit 42, Paul 17, copy your stop. Seaford Road and Warhol Road. Unit 42, Paul 11, copy your stop. 100 block Lancaster Avenue. Unifor 2 Paul 17, copy your stop. Seaford Road and Warhol Road. Unifor 2 Paul 11, copy your stop. 100 block Lancaster Avenue. God. Yeah, I can't stand when I can't remember where something was found. And we could try listening to that again. Today, as District Attorney Deborah drove back past, the individual was gone. Line along the south side. Today, as District Attorney Deb Ryan, Chief County Detective David Sasa, FBI ASAC Jamie Milligan, and Rob Clark from the U.S. Marshal's Office. There have been a number of significant developments overnight in this investigation and manhunt. At approximately 8 p.m. last evening, a motorist reported seeing a male crouched near the wood line along the south side of Fairview Road. South, okay. perimeter friendlies are coming out of the wood line near the west of Route 100. the wood line near the power line. So right here it was crouched down. Wait. Fairview? There's that's Fairview. Right there. They call it something else though. Nat Mule Fairview. So maybe it's like right here. So Copy. south of the wood line. So maybe here or something. I can add both to your RP and it's just my report. 8 p.m. County all units work a perimeter. Nine, Friendlies are coming nine. out of the wood lines near the power lines. Friendlies coming out of the wood line near the power lines. Okay. The motorist turned her vehicle around in an effort to verify what she saw. As she drove back past, the individual was gone. We had a large number of troopers already in the area and utilized them to form a perimeter around that area. A Border Patrol tactical team was also in the immediate vicinity and went directly to the location of the sighting. They observed footprints in some mud which were identical to the prison shoes worn by Cavalcante. That's pretty good investigative stuff right there. Okay, there you go. That's the location. For you two calls, I'll add your RPs to mine. And I'll so from there, he pretty much walked right over here. It's inside this perimeter. Copy, there you go. You. I'm pretty sure that's the spot. Sounds right. Thank you. I just knew it wasn't the right place based on what we were looking at with the when people were giving it so if you go inside right here I believe I'll be able to tell you if this is right yep remember the little van that was right there and there's the uh, driveway and it even says 3548 on it this is what we we're looking at earlier 
And if you go another little step over here, you can see up into, there's the garage. And then he ran down this road and he was shot at. And then he dumped some items that were found right there anyway. A track was initiated and shortly thereafter, both of his prison shoes were located. Information was received from another resident in, the, in that immediate area that a pair of work boots had been stolen from a porch at her residence. The tracking of Cavalcante continued in a northerly direction, and at 10.10 10 p.m., a call was received from a resident on Coventryville Road indicating a short Hispanic male, no shirt, and wearing dark pants, had entered his garage while the home... Huh, so it must have been in an article where we got that. Because I had the same spot earlier, if you were watching. For you two calls, the owner was in it, and that he grabbed a twenty two rifle that was leaning in the corner of the garage. The homeowner drew a pistol and fired at Cavalcante as he fled with the rifle. PSP responded and secured that scene. At that time, a green sweatshirt and white T-shirt believed to belong to Cavalcante were discovered near the edge of the driveway. The perimeter was expanded to include that area. Overnight, searches of the area within the perimeter were conducted by tactical teams from multiple agencies. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, so he goes from down here, and he goes about, um, let's see, it's about a mile, and then there must have been a point where, you know, he could have even, like I was saying the other day, you guys, these little tree areas like this are just crazy for him he can just you know i don't know if, how good that you know but just if you get through yeah, enough you time and you stay low you can go right through that and it kind of keeps you from being spotted uh, on the ground anyways and you know the helicopters have to get refueled so you wonder if on some of those times before they had a second hel helicopter if when he would see it fly away he knew okay now i can't be seen from the air. Yep, so here they go. Uh, basically, that's the school there. That's the general area. The school is... I think that's the school right there. So the um, rifle was stolen right there. And so they're still in the area here. They don't think he's left this area. There's so many dense pieces of wood there. The tunnel thing, I think, is totally being overblown by people. Uh, sure, there might be tunnels somewhere, oh, but how would he know where all the tunnels were? You know, like, uh, they're not really readily, you know, you're not walking around one day and you go, oh, there's a tunnel there. You know, I think it's sort of like you have to know where they are and they're, I'm betting that some of them are locked. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go take off for a few minutes, you guys, and we'll come back on in, at 7 o'clock at my time and do a full, you know, on to the, into the evening. All right? Does that sound good or what? All right, you guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks for all the input and your uh, information, et cetera, et cetera. I get it. Sort of needed on this. <laughs> and... Uh, pretty crazy pretty crazy all right thank you all for being here we'll see you in an hour and as i always say until next time well before i say the until next time let me thank everybody for god's sakes i don't want to miss out on the other stream call well, anyone step on the sign as a follow-up you can make that show and i'll be clear uh, that's not it this you know, one, you no, it? that's not what it is it's just all 41 key clear there you go. washington house <laughs> So thank you to Annabelle Stealth, Callie Gal 3 with a cat eye, K Me, Kit Kat, Eugenie, Amy Higg, Tracy, Travel and Teresa, Music City Mom 2, Paulette Leonard, uh, Ashy Snow, Amber Maiden, Your Gypsy, Dina, then Amy Higg with a cat eye, then Amber Maiden, Travel and Teresa, Amy Higg with another cat eye. Thank you so much. Uh, Gloria Batari, WNC Granny, and Classical Guitarist. And there you have it. So thank you guys for supporting the channel on the stream. If you're unaware and you're just somebody that 
just got here, we've donated from my the income from my channel here, a hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars since January twenty twenty because of you guys. I mean, you guys are the ones that uh, make it happen. You know, so we're the Freak Family on the Gray Hughes Investigates channel, and you guys are the what drive the. I do the shows, and you guys support the channel and allow us to do all the amazing things that we do do. So we've got 13 DNA cases currently in the works right now. So you got to admit, that's pretty awesome. All right, thanks, everybody. And again, as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, flag rejector. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pop protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector with all respect, y'all. Just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody, talk to you later. BP 25, Chester County Prison, 501 South Lavasa Road, New Medical Department, Carlson Township, Fire Problem. We have 5 copy your stop, 700 watts, Darby Paley Road.
Merci. Five five four four, okay. Yeah, five five four four, okay. Yeah. Three four three, call ninety one. I just sent Brown a phone assignment. It's happened to the solicitors from earlier this evening. CP units on the perimeter. We do have friendlies in the wood line off of Mount Pleasant. Once again, we do have friendlies in the wood line off of Mount Pleasant. Three zero four zero. One four four two one clear. Check route, correction, correct. Check Birmingham Road west of Lenape Road for a fawn deceased in the roadway. The caller described that she was coming down Birmingham Road passing Country Club and it was prior to Route 52. She was unable to move it from the roadway.